Welcome back, my luxurious fleet. I'm going to be answering your questions that I had you ask me for my 1,000 subscriber video update. I'll see you on the other side of the intro. Hit that like button. Let's do this. Okay, so question one. Hey, real quick, before I get into it, just want to thank you guys for continuing to support the channel. I'm not churning out as much content uh, for lots of reasons. One, it's super cold out, um, but I am going to try to recommit to you guys and produce a, a little bit more content, maybe two videos a week if I can, uh, fairly consistency, consistently. I also want to thank you guys because I, I think I'm over 1,200 subscribers now. So what was it like? Two weeks ago, three weeks ago that I, you know, had the subscriber Q&A video. Now it's just a few weeks later and I have a couple hundred more of you guys. So uh, let's just get into question one. Feel free, guys, to answer, to ask questions again down below. I'll probably answer them in the chat instead of a video like this. Uh, but this is kind of fun for me anyway. So question one, will Lexus ever make an all-wheel drive ES? Any news on Lexus pursuing all electric vehicle to compete with Tesla? Yes, Lexus is going to make an all wheel drive ES. It's been all but confirmed. Uh, expect it in about a year from now. Um, and when that debuts, that's pretty much the cue to kill off the GS, unfortunately. Um, but yes, the ES will have all wheel drive. I would expect it in about a year from now. On to the all electric vehicle. Yes, Lexus is investing billions, I quote, billions of dollars into electric vehicles. Lexus won't, and Toyota for that matter, will not make something if it is not as bulletproof as possible. That is why a lot of their vehicles have been around for so long because they one they sell well two they are extremely reliable and that's what people want more than anything out of their vehicles nowadays people want to get their money's worth and not feel like they're cheated so back on topic to an electric vehicle yes lexus is developing an electric vehicle from what i've heard it is an all-wheel drive well, of course, most, most electric vehicles are all-wheel drive. But is it, it's a SUV, completely new to my knowledge. Uh, <clears throat> let's just throw out like the Hyundai Kona. I think that's what it's called. That vehicle has no gasoline counterpart. Now, I know it's a Hyundai, but it's an electric vehicle and there's not that many of them. So Lexus is developing their own SUV, from what I've heard, to be all-electric only. Thanks, Tayshawn. All right. This one from Christian Games. Did you get a lot of customers that haggle you about car prices? Or do you both come to a mutual, affordable agreement that helps them save money and helps you make money? Great question. So let's take a step back. Um, I work for a Lexus dealership that is considered a Lexus Plus dealership. <clears throat> that means a couple things. First of all, we're market-based pricing. So all of our prices are fixed. So if you guys are familiar with Car CarMax, they fix all of their vehicles' prices. There's no haggle room. There's no wiggle room. The price is the price. Lexus Plus where I think there's only 12 to 15 dealerships in the United States out of the 240 that are Lexus Plus. We give you one price. It's kind of a take it or leave it mentality. We, we are very prideful about it. Um, we stick to our guns. People still try to haggle. Um, no matter how many times we tell them, hey, the price of the vehicle will not change a dime. This is the very best price we can do. So we always have an MSRP. Of course, that is from the factory. And then we have a Lexus Plus price that depending on the vehicle, I, let's just say it's $2,000 less than the MSRP. And that is the price anyone can buy the vehicle for. Now, on top of that, Lexus will have 
uh, factory incentives usually on the vehicle that people are looking at. So they get additional, let's say $1,000 off. So you're now $3,000 short of the MSRP. How do I make money? Well, every Lexus dealership is different. Um, I make money not on commission. Since we're Lexus Plus, uh, I don't know if there's, there might be some Lexus Plus out there that make money on commission. I make money off of volume. Um, I'm not gonna put up my pay schedule or anything like that. If you guys are interested uh, of how I get paid based off of products and volume, I could definitely spend about 20 minutes on a video just for that. Um, but I make money on volume and it's specific to my dealership. So the dealership has say on how they pay their salespeople. Um, I don't think Lexus has any say over that. So I do make money. Um, these, uh, the summer, it's the easiest to make money just because volume goes super, super high. Um, but we'll save that for another video if you guys are interested. <clears throat> Sorry for my voice, guys. Uh, I probably sound like I've been smoking a pack of cigarettes a day for the past month. I got food poisoning last week, and then I came... Uh, I don't want to talk about that. That was disgusting. But then I came down with a cold right after that because my immune system was compromised from the food poisoning. Life. So, next question. Uh, if you could have... This is from my boy, Ahmed... Musaji, sorry if I butchered that Ahmed, but you he's been following the channel since since like I don't know 10 subscribers, I swear. Um super knowledgeable. I think he owns a RX 450H, uh the first generation, I believe, but I guess it would be a 400H. But let's get into it. If you could have any Lexus for good, what would it be? LX570. Done. One point, so he, he has another spin off that question again. Only Lexus, what would your daily driver be? Uh, ES300H hybrid done 45 miles per gallon, weekend car LC500 done, family car still the LX. Uh, I have no desire for really any other crossovers. I kind of like the UX, I think it's cute, it's efficient, but I don't. I'm not, I don't like my, I personally don't like the RX or the NX that much. I think they're amazing vehicles for the right people. They're built amazingly well, but they're not my favorite. What is my ultimate Japanese car? It's probably got to be the Mazda RX-7, um, the last one they made. So was that like 1995, the twin turbo one? Um, I grew up playing a bunch of Need for Speed video games on like, GameCube and Xbox and um, the RX-7 was just like a legend in those games. So was the, the I think it was the R34 Skyline, but the RX-7 I love the most to handle the best in those games. I love the styling the best. Um, so that's my ultimate Japanese uh, vehicle. My daily family and weekend Japanese car, um, I would just go back to that what my favorite Lexus vehicles would be. Uh, moving on, my ultimate non-Japanese car. Oh, you know, I've been liking minis lately. Um, I just like the design of them. I don't like the interior design, but I like the exterior design of minis. But, um, you put me on the spot there. Lux Cruisers, my boy with Lux Cruisers. He's been uh, following the channel for a while. I see him on pretty much every single uh, LX or Land Cruiser video outside of my channel. So he says, I've always wondered if you do these to eventually become a YouTuber is it simply a supplement to your work at the dealership. Excuse me for my sniveling. Do your videos bring buyers into your dealership? Um, so I'm not going to read this whole thing. Uh, let's just segment it. I've always wondered if you wanted to do these eventually become a YouTuber. Yes and no. I originally started this channel to kind of educate myself um, on the vehicles. And I'm like, well, if I'm just, if I'm going to spend this much time with Lexus vehicles and non-Lexus vehicles, I might as well share it to other people. 
um, and have them educate me because most people know about these cars more than I do. So, um, I, uh, yeah, I started it for not only self-education, but to educate other people uh, and just bring quality, and I'm getting better at the quality part, but bring quality uh, videos, educational videos on vehicles to you guys on the YouTubes. Um, that was my original goal. If it becomes something I can do full time, then hell yeah, I would much rather do this than uh, sell Lexus. There's a lot of drama. There's a lot of ups and downs being a car salesman, and I could totally forego that if this is a stable job for me. Okay. Um, do my videos bring buyers into your dealership? No. However, there was a guy who bought a car from a different salesman, um, uh, internet salesperson, and he's like, oh my gosh, that's the dude from YouTube, blah, 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 blah. So that was kind of cool just because, um, I mean, I only have like 1,200 subscribers, so I don't have that big of a like ecosystem of people who know my videos. So that was just kind of cool to know that, you know, I'm actually helping people in their buying decisions. And that was another goal of mine as well. It wasn't necessarily for me to bring people in. That, because the average buyer is like 65 years old, rich person. They don't watch YouTube. Average people watch YouTube or my generation or younger. Um, so, and most of us don't have the money to buy a Lexus. So I don't even know if that guy who recognized me even bought a Lexus. So um, could have bought a different pre-owned vehicle from us. Uh, let's see here. Uh, still on Lux Cruisers. Finally, what are your favorite car related TV shows? Blah, 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 blah. Um, I used to watch, uh, uh, gosh, um, Top Gear when I was in college. I really enjoyed that show. But you know what? I don't, I don't even have cable. Yeah, I could watch, uh, what do you call it, Grand Tour on Amazon Prime, but I don't, I don't watch TV. As crazy as that sounds, yeah, I'll catch different videos here and there from a couple of their YouTubers, like obviously Doug Demuro and uh, Tyler from Hoovy's Garage. I'll watch him. Uh, I also like Redline Reviews now and then. He's a little dry. And same thing with Alex and Autos. He's a little dry, but their their videos are educational. Um, I like uh, the Straight Pipes guys. Uh, I enjoy their videos quite a bit. They're probably my favorite uh, YouTubers for videos um, on vehicles. So I hope that answered your question. Sign to Trace, so sign of three. What are your thoughts between a 2019 ES350 F Sport front wheel drive and a 2018 GS350 F Sport rear wheel drive? Well, they're so similar yet so different. They're both mid-size uh, sedans, very sporty. They both have adaptable variable suspension. Um, they both are, uh, they both have the same engine. They both have an eight-speed transmission. The GS has like nine more horsepower than the ES. Um, to answer your question, I would pick the GS350 all-wheel drive F-Sport. However, the ES350 F-Sport is probably about five grand less, if not more, than the rear-wheel drive F-Sport GS. So I think you can't really go wrong with either. They're so similar and different. Uh, here's your answer. Wait for the all-wheel drive ES. Done. Done. Um, last question from Marcus Bertolozzi. Will the LS get a twin turbo V8? I don't know. Um, you know, the, the twin turbo V6 in it is sufficient, but Lexus, I've heard rumors of Lexus doing an LSF. Um, probably would cost about 150 grand, and they would put the same engine from the LCF in it, if that's the case. But that's just rumors, so uh, don't go telling anyone that, you know, oh, Luxurious Kirk says, you know, it's, there's going to be an LSF. That's just a rumor. 
Um, I haven't heard anything from anyone at my dealership. Um, Lexus, I'll just say this, Lexus is doing everything that they can to stay relevant in performance. Um, that's something they've lacked in. And ever since the ISF, they've been, been increasingly more sporty and giving you options. So you have the RCF, you're gonna have the LCF. Um, the ES has an F Sport now. But yes, um, the IS, in my, my opinion, needs to have the twin turbo V6 from the LS. Uh, there's a lot of things, and that that twin turbo uh, V6 probably also needs to be the GX. Uh, there's a lot of things Lexus should do with their power plants that they're not doing, uh, probably for the sake of profits, uh, sales, and conservatism. Conservatism. As you guys know, Lexus is super conservative. So if we see a twin turbo V8 in the LS, Watch out, because Lexus is swinging for the fence. But uh, if you guys have any more questions for me, uh, this is about 17 minutes long already. Um, put them down below. I'll try to answer them in the comments. Uh, thanks, guys, again so much for being followers of my channel. 1,200 sub subscribers, that's pretty crazy. Um, thanks again. I'll see you guys in the next video.